we will continue with uh, fiber reinforced polymer composites. In the second half of uh, this lecture, we will look at some case studies where we will look at uh, how FRP is used for strengthening and retrofitting. On this picture that you have in the screen, uh, what you see is a piece of the FRP that has been anchored to the concrete surface with this glass fiber anchor. So, what is done is first the sheet is put on this blue uh, sheet that you see is now adhered on to a concrete surface. The blue color is coming from the uh, epoxy and in order that the sheet does not peel off very easily from the concrete surface. In some case some places a system called uh, fiber anchors are used where there is a hole made through the FRP and through the concrete. In this a bunch of fibers are inserted the fiber ends are fanned out like this and glued on to the FRP. So, this now bonds with the FRP sheet inside the glass fibers have bonded with the concrete and this holds the sheet in place. So, this uh, other than looking nice also bonds the FRP to the concrete better. The small specks that you see in brown color are sand particles that are put on the FRP surfaces such that we can plaster it on we can put a coating on it. So, that the FRP is not exposed this is just to roughen the surface for plastering or rendering to be done on top of the FRP. We look at an we look at a case study where such a system has been used to anchor the FRP sheet to concrete. The first case study that we will be talking about is where a slab was strengthened. So, here we had a room with load bearing masonry walls and a reinforced concrete roof slab rested on these walls. A decision was made to extend the size of the room. So, one of the walls had to be removed for extending the room. So, the strengthening was to compensate for the loss of support on one side since the wall was being removed and to ensure that the slab was safe enough. So, here a combination of FRP laminates carbon fiber reinforced polymer laminates and carbon fiber sheets were used. Here you see in the top left picture the CFRP laminates coming in a roll and uh, now from each roll the laminate is uh, taken out cut to the length required. So, this is a uh, disc saw being used to cut the laminate after proper analysis and design we know where the laminate should be placed. So, uh, this is where the surface has been prepared and this is where the laminates are going to come and this is the zone where sheets are going to be used to anchor the FRP laminates. So, surface preparation as I said in the um, first part of this lecture it is very important we should ensure that the laminate or the sheet will bond well to the concrete surface. The epoxy is mixed we should ensure that the epoxy has the proper proportions and it is mixed uniformly and properly. The laminate that is used is coated with the epoxy. So, this is like a box with a slit at the bottom and the FRP laminate is pulled through the box and as it goes through the box it gets a certain thickness of epoxy on it. We do not want too much epoxy a very thick epoxy layer between the FRP and the concrete will cause failure of the epoxy. So, we want a thin enough layer that can ensure proper bonding, but it is not too thick that it will become a weak layer in the system. The laminate is aligned along the place where it has to be put. So, it has to be held in place ensured that there are no gaps and the, it goes from one end to the other as required. The laminates are then fixed ensured that the epoxy is now uh, bonding well held in place excess the epoxy is removed by a roller. So, a roller is passed on the surface which squeezes out any epoxy 
excess epoxy between the FRP and the concrete. So, now the laminates are in place and we will place we will see how the CFRP sheet that is the carbon fiber reinforced polymer sheet is now placed at the ends for anchoring the laminates. So, this is the mixing of the epoxy again we have to ensure that the mixing is proper in the proper proportions. So, that the sheet will bond well to the slab and remember the difference between the laminate and the sheet is that in the laminate the polymer making up the matrix of the FRP is already cured. The system comes as a fully prepared laminate and all the laminate has to be done is glued on to the concrete surface. In the case of the usage of a sheet, we just get the carbon fibers. The role of carbon fibers that you see here, this would be a role of carbon fibers. The fiber now has to be embedded in epoxy and adhered to the surface for the FRP laminate to form on the slab itself. So, what is being done now is a primer is applied, the blue color is the first layer of epoxy on the concrete surface, then the CFRP sheet is spread. On top of it again we put la epoxy, this epoxy now penetrates the fibers and this along with the base epoxy will form the polymer matrix to embed these fibers and only then we have the laminate or the composite forming from the carbon fibers. There is a protective sheet on the carbon fibers, this is being removed and as I said the coating of epoxy is now being applied. So, this is the coating being applied. Finally, after the coating is applied, sand is sprayed on to the epoxy surface, so that it is rough enough for cement plastering to be done or cement rendering to be done on the surface. Otherwise, the surface is so smooth that the plaster will not stick for this sand is sprayed while the epoxy is still wet. In another case, we will look at how the repair and uh, retrofitting was done for a fire damage seminar hall. Here we had a hall with a reinforced concrete frame and uh, roof slab, brick masonry walls and it so happened that the furniture and the wooden panelling of the hall caught fire and the fire was quickly extinguished, but there was some damage that was done. It was found that the beams and the columns had to be strengthened to compensate for the damage and also after this there was going to be an additional floor to be built on the top. So, the strengthening was done to compensate for the damage and also to take the additional load that could come up. So, there was some retrofitting also involved additional to the repair and the rehabilitation. So, these are some pictures of uh, what happened to the building and how it was uh, repaired. So, here you see the charred uh, plaster uh, being removed. So, the, so, this is some of the charred plaster and this had to be removed. So, this is again the process of removal, there was some scaffolding put and the plaster was uh, removed. Here you see more pictures as the plastering is being removed. Replastering was done to provide a uniform uh, surface as the existing concrete surface or the old concrete surface was not, not smooth enough, was not smooth enough. So, replastering was done. Here you see almost the replastering completed. The gray surface that you see is the new plaster that was placed on the slab and on the beams. The columns were also replastered. This is the outside of the hall. This is the hall that caught fire and that is being uh, rehabilitated and retrofitted. This is the outside surface also being plastered. Before the FRP can be applied, the surface is prepared. This is surface preparation being done with an abrasive disc. The surface is cleaned and roughened. 
then a primer is applied like we saw in the previous case an epoxy primer is being applied that is what you see as dark grey wet surface. The laminate is being fixed here in this case you see at the soffit of the beam one laminate has been fixed this is the black is the carbon fiber polymer laminate. Here you see more laminates on the beams and on the slabs wherever necessary for reinforcing the slab these laminates were placed on the beams and the slabs. Afterwards the joints also were reinforced with sheets this is glass fiber now being used glass fiber polymer sheets you can see the lighter color these are now glass fibers in the previous case study we saw carbon fibers here glass fibers were used to look at more of ductility of the joints and how we can ensure that in the case of seismic activity there would be sufficient ductility of the joints. So, the glass fiber reinforced polymer sheets were used to provide ductility of the joints and also hold in place the laminates. So, the joints were wrapped and the columns and the beams were also wrapped. Here you see after the wrapping with the glass fibers the shiny white surface is the glass fibers the epoxy is put on top and with a roller the epoxy is pushed through the uh, glass fibers. So, that there is complete impregnation and you have a composite being formed more pictures of the same this is now the column being wrapped you see the glass fiber sheets being put around and epoxy put on the surface and with a roller the epoxy is pushed through the fibers. So, we have a complete system more pictures on the external columns uh, being wrapped. <coughs> now, in the leading slide I talked about glass fiber anchors. So, this is one of the anchors being placed. So, this is now the sheet of uh, glass fiber put on the concrete surface due to stresses there could be a delamination of this sheet that this sheet could peel off due to excessive stresses and failure of the adhesive or the failure of the base surface. So, to ensure better anchoring a hole is made going through the FRP and into the concrete say uh, about 5 centimeters a bunch of fibers are pushed in along with some epoxy. So, that that end will bond into the concrete the other fibers are now spread like a fan ok. So, you see it here and the fanned fibers are now glued on to the FRP and that will provide for anchoring of the FRP sheet to the concrete. Finally, the wet epoxy surface is sprayed with sand to give a rough finish. So, that cement plastering can be done on top of it to give a uniform surface. We can also have repair done with pre stressed FRP laminates. Now, this is a good point to explain the difference between active reinforcement and passive reinforcement. Passive reinforcement is um, are the cases that we have discussed up to now where you put a sheet onto a surface and until there is some strain developed the FRP sheet does not act at all it is just sitting on the surface. So, that is passive until the concrete surface deforms the FRP does not have any role. In the case of active reinforcement the FRP system is stressed. So, there is some stress applied to the FRP laminate or the sheet and even before any additional loading comes onto the surface this FRP is under stress. So, this is used to recover deflections and to pre stress the whole system just like we would have in pre stressing concrete. So, the case that we are going to talk about now is in the case of an FRP laminate that is pre stressed where we would want to recover deflections or 
close cracks that could have developed and decrease the tension in the concrete. In the case of a passive system, further deformation, further deflections are helped by the FRP, but we do not recover anything because we are gluing on the FRP to something that is already deformed. Okay. So, now we look at how pre-stressed FRP laminates can be used. So, in the case of a pre-stressed FRP laminate, we have anchors. See these steel pieces that you see are going to be anchored on to the concrete surface. So, these are the laminates just like what we saw before, but at the end of each laminate we have a steel plate with an anchor that is going to be used to pull the FRP. So, that when the FRP is bonded to the concrete surface, it is already under stress. So, this stress will help recover deflection and close any cracks that could be there on the concrete surface. So, first the concrete surface is prepared, this is say a soffit of a slab and we are putting a primer layer over which the FRP is going to be uh, placed. The FRP is placed and a reaction plate is put for the pre-stressing jack. So, this plate is now anchored to the concrete surface this end is free, this end of the FRP is free because this is the end that we are going to pull. So, this is going to be pulled, this is free to pull this we have to react against something. So, it will be rea the reaction will be against this plate. So, you see here this is the reaction plate and this is the free end of the FRP that is going to be pulled. Jacks are used to pull each of the laminates, the stressing is done with hydraulic jacks and after it is pulled the polymer is allowed to set and cure. So, the FRP is under stress and under stress the FRP is bonded to the concrete. After the polymer is cured this end is cut off and you have the final system. So, this is the FRP which is active now that is it is under stress from time 0 and these are the reaction plates at the ends. So, this is an example of how pre-stressed FRP laminates are used and this is a case of active reinforcement where we can recover deflections and we can reduce the existing tensile stresses in the concrete surface. So, I will show you a case study uh, the source is RNM International of Mumbai where they used pre-stress laminates to strengthen a floor slab. Strengthening was uh, done with both negative and positive reinforcement. Negative reinforcement was with unstressed laminates, positive reinforcement was done with pre-stress laminates. This was done in the case of the Platina uh, Vadva complex in Mumbai. This is a picture of the building after uh, the strengthening. And this is a section of the slab showing where the non pre stressed laminates were used and where pre stressed laminates were used. So, the negative reinforcement was pre stressed, this is the bottom of the slab, the top of the slab where you have the hogging moments, not much moments were there. So, uh, non pre stressed laminates were used or not. I okay, will start again. So, this is a section of the slab showing where non pre stress laminates and pre stress laminates were used. Wherever we have very high moments, pre stress laminates were used, shown by the yellow shade, and in the other cases, non pre stress laminates were used. So, here you see the negative reinforcement uh, of the slab the slab being prepared, the laminates uh, being placed and these are the end, end anchors. Instead of the glass fiber anchors, here metal anchors were used, where the ends of the FRP are bonded through mechanical anchorage to the concrete slab, so that they do not peel off or start pulling off. So, this is a case of non pre stress system for the negative reinforcement. For the positive reinforcement just like you saw in the previous pictures, we have the case of the FRP being pulled 
this is now the plates being anchored to the concrete slab and then after the stressing is done this is how the system ends up looking. So, we have the pre stressed FRP with the reaction plates at the end. Another way of using laminates is in cut ins where the laminate instead of being adhered to the surface is inserted into the concrete. Generally when we put an FRP on the surface it could peel off and we saw that it had to be anchored to be held in place and to mobilize all the strength of the FRP. Another way of using an FRP laminate is as a cut in or what is called a near surface mounting where if you have say a concrete a column or a beam we make a cut in the cover and insert the laminate and the laminate is glued inside. Obviously, for this the concrete cover should be in good shape otherwise we will have to cut the steel and insert further and so on. The depth of the cut could be about 10 or 15 millimeters the thickness of the cut is in the order of about 5 millimeters. Here also what you see is that you have bonding of the laminate on both surfaces whereas, if it is only surface bonded only on one side it is bonded. So, you get you mobilize more of the strength of the FRP. These are more pictures how columns could be reinforced with these FRP laminates beams could be reinforced to increase the shear capacity. So, as I mentioned some of the advantages of such surface mounted laminates or cut ins are the mobilization of a higher part of the tensile strength of the CFRP laminate. There is also a prevention of peeling or delamination because it is embedded inside and it does not peel off that easily. It provides protection against fire and vandalism the FRP is not really exposed because now it is within the concrete and only the edge is exposed which can be covered. In the case of a surface bonded FRP you have the FRP exposed and could lose strength in a fire or if somebody intentionally wants to cut the FRP they can do so, but not in the case of a surface mounted laminate or a cut in. The execution is also fast because the FRP does not have to be held in place for a long time and it is just inserted into the cut. These are pictures on how the surface is prepared and executed this is from a lab study. You see here the column uh, cover being cut with a disc saw it is cleaned up to remove all the dust epoxy and the FRP laminate is now inserted and held in place. So, when finished this external surface is smooth. So, we will not even know that the FRP laminate is inside. Another and a quite popular way of retrofitting and strengthening is to use FRP sheets for wrapping. Here you use a carbon fiber sheet which is wrapped around a column and as the column under stress tries to expand this FRP provides confinement and effectively increases the compressive load carrying capacity. So, here we see pictures of how the wrapping is done this is the placing of the sheets here uh, sheets are cut with lengths equal to the circumference and little bit more to provide overlapping and placed around the column epoxy priming is done. So, that the epoxy penetrates the carbon fiber and becomes a laminate after curing. You can also have helicoidal placing where instead of the sheet being cut to certain lengths like this you can have a sheet that is completely wrapped a continuous sheet that is wrapped around the column. In this case these are pre impregnated sheets. So, it has some epoxy or polymer already there a pre polymer and the curing is completed by applying another polymer that will cause the reaction to occur and you have the hardening or the curing of the polymer around the column itself. 
So, this is a very effective way for increasing the confinement and therefore, increasing the compressive load carrying capacity of a compressive member like a, a column. I will show you results from some tests showing how much the load carrying capacity can increase. These are tests done with on two types of concrete, a normal strength concrete of 30 mega Pascal compressive strength and a higher strength concrete of 60 mega Pascal compressive strength. Fibers that were used were carbon and glass fibers. So, these are fiber sheets and the polymerization is done after wrapping and this is the load configuration this is the uh, concrete piece after wrapping and compressive load uniaxial compressive load is applied and these extensometers are measuring the di the displacement from which the strain is calculated. Also there are strain gauges that are pasted on the carbon fiber. So, let us see what would happen in these concrete cylinders that are wrapped with fiber reinforced polymers. The polymers used are two, the carbon fiber reinforced polymer and glass. The thickness of the sheet varies slightly, the weight is lighter in the case of a carbon fiber. Elastic modulus is much higher in the carbon fiber than the glass this we saw earlier also. Tensile strength is only slightly higher in this case and elongation is much more in the case of glass fiber as we saw before. So, we would expect more elongation or uh, higher strains at failure in the case of a glass fiber, whereas we would expect higher confinement because of the higher stiffness of the carbon fiber in the case of a CFRP. A stiffer material would deform less under stress and therefore, would provide higher confinement laterally. So, these are results from the tests of the 30 mega Pascal concrete with carbon fiber wraps. We have here the axial strain and this is the lateral strain that is the transversal strain. On the x on the y axis we have the stress or the axial stress. In the case of an unconfined concrete cylinder we have the black curve. So, it goes up to about 40 mega Pascal and then you have softening and failure that there is no confinement. With one layer of carbon fiber you now see that you have instead of this softening behavior we have a plastic type behavior. Instead of the drop we have a flat curve. So, the ductility has changed significantly instead of sudden failure we have a gradual uh, change in load carrying capacity and ultimately failure will occur. There is however, no significant increase in the maximum load, the load is almost the same. However, with three layers of carbon fiber, now stiffness is increased, we increase the load carrying capacity and go up to about 70 mega Pascal instead of 40. With six layers, we have gone up to about 100 mega Pascals, more than doubled the load carrying capacity of the concrete. <coughs> In terms of lateral strain also we find that there is significant lateral strain build up even with one layer before failure occurs. So, there is a significant up amount of expansion that is possible under stress before failure occurs. In terms of glass again we find similar behavior however, when we have six layers instead of the more than double of the load carrying capacity that we saw with carbon fibers we are just about double the load carrying capacity is less with six layers of glass fibers than with six layers of carbon fibers. So, we see that the glass fiber is less efficient in increasing the load carrying capacity. Now, let us see what happens in the case of a higher strength concrete a 60 mega Pascal concrete. This again now is the axial strain axial stress and lateral strain. 
this black curve is the unconfined concrete. We have a rapid increase and then a very sharp drop almost ideal brittle failure. There is no hardly any softening we have a sudden failure in the concrete uh, at after about 70 mega Pascals. With one layer again you do not see the curve, but it is almost again similar uh, dropping very fast with one layer of carbon fiber reinforcement. With three layers now you have a flat curve plastic response slight increase in the load carrying capacity. With six layers now we have much higher load carrying capacity around 130 or 140 mega Pascal instead of about 70. After that we do not see a major change in load carrying capacity as the number of layers increases with 12 layers we go up to about 200 mega Pascal in a concrete with a strength of 60 mega Pascal. So, we see that in high strength concrete we need more number of layers to cause higher increases in load carrying capacity, but it can be achieved with the right number of carbon fibers. The reason why we have less effective confinement in higher strength concrete is that high strength concrete has less defects later on when we talk about concrete you will see that high strength concrete has less defects and therefore, it expands or dilates less under compressive stress. And this wrapping is a passive reinforcement unless there is deformation laterally of the concrete the carbon fiber does not react or does not contribute to the load carrying capacity. The confining stress is only built up as the concrete expands and higher strength concrete will expand less. In the case of glass fibers again we see that only with three layers we are able to get a flat curve with this is the unconfined concrete dropping very rapidly with one layer again we continue to have softening with three layers we have more of plastic behavior and at 12 layers instead of getting about 200 mega Pascal that we got with the carbon fiber we get only in the order of 160 mega Pascal at failure. So, the glass fiber is less efficient in increasing the load carrying capacity, but it does a good job in terms of ductility we are able to get a lot of strain before failure. And remember what I told you glass fibers are generally cheaper. So, if we can get a lot of ductility and the required load carrying uh, capacity increase glass fibers could be good in certain applications. So, this day so these data from uh, tests showed that when you wrap a concrete element with glass or carbon fibers you increase the load carrying capacity and this is brought about because of the confinement that the wrap offers as the concrete expands due to the uniaxial compressive stress the fibers prevent it or tend to prevent it and therefore, a confinement results and you have a higher load carrying capacity. Now, we discuss two types of application of FRP in the previous slides one was the cut in or the near surface mounted laminates or inserted laminates and then wrapping. So, this is a case study where both these techniques were used again this is from work done by RNM international in Mumbai where strengthening of ground flow columns had to be done during the construction of the structure. This can happen for example, when you have a structure being built and permission is obtained for additional floors after the design and construction has started. So, to take advantage of the additional floors that are now possible to construct the lower floors have to be strengthened obviously, we have to ensure that the foundation is good enough, but if we ensure that the bottom floors which have already been constructed now are strengthened we can add higher floors as long as permission is obtained. So, this is what happened in this building. So, we have the columns here 
with grooves cut. So, you see the grooves and laminates are inserted and finished off. So, unless you look very carefully, you will not see the laminates. This, these are all the laminates in the columns. After placing the laminates, wrapping is done with glass fibers. This is the uh, wrapping done. You see the sheet placed and this now holds these laminates in place and also gives confinement to the concrete column. So, therefore, the load carrying capacity of this column increases significantly due to the combination of the inserting of the laminates and the higher confinement that is brought about by the FRP wraps. So, we have looked at different case studies in the second half of this lecture where FRP systems were used to uh, rehabilitate, strengthen and retrofit concrete structures. There are many reasons why we do this. We saw a case where a modification of a structure was done. So, a wall was removed and this had to be uh, now compensated by strengthening the slab. So, that the support is replaced by reinforcement here in the form of FRP. You can have a structure where additional floors have to be added and can be added an existing structure and we have to add more floors on it, then we can use FRP to reinforce and retrofit uh, this structure. We can also have cases where load carrying capacity has to be increased. For example, in a bridge, a bridge that has been designed for certain standards and with time these standards allow for higher loads due to heavier lorries or trucks. So, there again you have to retrofit or increase the strength of the structure. So, that there also FRP can be used. So, in many cases FRP is very advantageous and we saw that in most cases the FRP after application is hardly seen. It does not disturb normal functioning of the building and does not add on lot of thickness or weight to the structure and that is why FRP is very popular. There are some disadvantages that we discussed earlier in terms of the high cost the lack of experience and codal provisions, but this will come in place, but we know that there are lot of applications happening, lot of structures in India are being retrofitted with fiber reinforced polymers and we will see a lot in the future, we will see a lot of such applications in the future also. So, this brings us to the end of the lecture on fiber reinforced polymers, earlier we looked at uh, polymers and here we looked at the composites which where we have polymers reinforced with carbon or glass fibers. Thank you very much.